chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again definition of a circle radius subtended angle arcs let us take a few definitions of the points related to a circle we know that a circle has a center we can call it as o the center is equidistant from the boundary or periphery of the circle this is the boundary of the circle the distance between the center and any point on the boundary is called the radius of the circle so this is the center and this is the radius and this is the boundary or circumference of the circle next we take up what is a chord if we have a circle like this then any segment that joins two points on the boundary of a circle is called the chord we can say that ab is a chord of this circle this is another chord cd because it also joins two points c and d on the periphery on the boundary of the circle cd is a line segment that joins two points c and d that lie on the circle and therefore cd is also a chord of this circle if this is the center of this circle and we draw a chord that passes through the center of the circle then this chord is also called the diameter of this circle so we can say that diameter is the longest chord of a circle diameter is the longest chord of a circle number 2 it passes through the center passes through the center and thirdly since this is the center and this is a straight line and we know that the distance between the center and periphery is equal to radius so this is r and similarly center to the periphery is also r therefore the entire length of this chord or the diameter is equal to 2 times the radius of the circle a chord divides the circle into two parts one for example is this part and the other is this part so each chord divides a circle into two parts these parts are called two arcs so this arc is ab arc one part into which the chord has divided the circle and since this is the second part into which the chord has divided the circle this is also called an arc of the circle to put it clearly let me erase the board and if i draw a circle like this and let us say this is one a chord of this circle ab is a chord of this circle and let this be the center point of the circle then this is an arc of this circle and this upper part is also an arc of this circle now if i join o to a and also o to b 
that is if i join the end points of a chord to the center then the angle formed aob is called the subtended angle subtended angle so we can say that the chord ab subtends an angle aob at the center of the circle we can say subtended angle at the center similarly if i join this end to a point on the periphery and also join this b to a point on that periphery then this angle is also the subtended angle subtended angle this angle is subtended on the periphery of the circle this angle is the angle subtended on the periphery of the circle by this chord ab whereas this angle is the angle subtended by the same chord at the center of the circle we can draw more subtended angles for example if i join a to b ab to this point p then this angle is also the angle subtended by the arc ab by the chord ab on the periphery of this circle another also can be drawn like this this is also the angle subtended by the chord on the periphery of this circle in some terminology instead of saying that this angle is the angle subtended by the chord on the periphery instead of saying on the periphery sometimes it is also said as the angle subtended on the circle so this is the angle subtended angle subtended on the circle by the chord ab this is the angle subtended at the center by the same chord ab take another example if this is the center and we draw a diameter chord for this then we say that the angle subtended by the diameter ab this is the center o the angle subtended by the diameter ab on the circle is this angle this angle is sometimes also called the angle subtended by the diameter in a semicircle we will study more about these angles the angle subtended on the circle the angle subtended in the semicircle and the angle subtended at the center in our later lectures but don't get very much confused between these subtended in nutshell it means the angle obtained by joining the end points of a chord to another point whether that point is on the on the periphery of the circle or it is on the midpoint whatever angle we get is called the subtended angle now we will apply these definitions to prove certain theorems related to the circles that will help us to develop good reasoning skills and also help us to develop our hold on the concept of the circles prove that equal chords of a circle subtend equal angles at the center let us first of all try to understand the situation and then we will give a proof of this fact this proof will help you develop good reasoning skills prove that equal chords of a circle subtend equal angles at the center supposing i have one chord as ab then and if o be the center then let me join o to a and o to b 
then this angle is the angle subtended by the chord AB. He says equal chords, therefore I have one more chord in the same circle. The length of this chord is same as the length of AB. Let me call this chord as PQ. The angle subtended by PQ on the center would be obtained like this. This is the angle subtended by the chord PQ on the center, this angle and this is the angle subtended by the chord AB on the center. We have to prove that if AB is exactly equal to PQ, then this angle will be equal to this angle. So we have to prove that if chord AB is equal to chord PQ is equal to chord PQ, then we have to prove that angle AOB is equal to angle POQ. Let us now prove this through a very systematic sequence of steps which will move from one step to another. Now, observe this triangle AOB. This is the radius R. This is also the radius R. This is also the radius R OP and OQ is also the radius R. We can observe that triangle AOB is congruent to triangle OPQ because they are congruent because OA is equal to OQ radii of the same circle. This OA is equal to OQ and OB is equal to OP. They are also the radii of the same circle and AB has already been given equal to PQ and AB is equal to PQ is given to us. So if you remember the rules of congruency by the triple S rule, these two triangles are congruent to each other. And since these are congruent, their corresponding angles should be equal. This triangle is congruent to this triangle. Now have a look at angle AOB. AOB is opposite to side AB. The counterpart of the side AB is PQ. And come to PQ, the angle opposite to PQ is POQ. Therefore, therefore, angle AOB has to be equal to angle POQ, the corresponding angles. So this proves that two equal chords AB and PQ will subtend the same angle at the center of the circle. By going through the proofs of these theorems, you will be helped by remembering these things in your heart because otherwise going through the rata process is very difficult. If you have gone through the proof of a theorem, then it is very easy to remember that theorem and such theorems, they will be required when you take up your exams. These will be indirectly there conditions in circles or in diagrams will be given where you will be required to apply these reasoning skills to find out your answers. Let us move to the next part of our study. Prove that if the angles subtended by the chords of a circle at the center are equal, then the chords are equal. For this, let us again draw a circle and a diagram to help us understand 
the situation. He says angle subtended by the chords. So let us take any two chords. One of the chord be called AB and the second chord be called PQ. Angle subtended by the chords of a circle at the center. So let this O be the center and join A to O, join O to B, join O to Q and join O to P. He says if these angles are equal to each other, these angles have been given equal. Angles subtended by the chords of a circle at the center are equal. If these are equal, then we have to prove that AB is equal to PQ. This is just the converse of the theorem that we have proved just now. So in this case, we have been given that angle AOB is equal to angle POQ and we have to prove that AB length is equal to the length of the chord PQ. As usual, let us begin by marking a small radius, small radius, radius, radius. OA, OB, OP and OQ are all radii of the same circle. Therefore, their lengths will be equal and we have marked small r as the length of all these four distances. Now let us begin by inspecting the two triangles AOB and the triangle POQ. We'll write the proof here. Triangle AOB is congruent to triangle POQ. Why? Because OA is equal to OQ, the radius, both are the radii of the same circle and OB is equal to OP is also the radii of the same circle. And angle AOB has been given equal to angle POQ and we can see that this side and this side and the included angle are correspondingly equal to the this side, this side and the included angle of the other triangle that is POQ. Therefore, by SAS rule of congruency, these two triangles are congruent to each other. If the two triangles are congruent, then their third side should also be correspondingly equal and the third side that is left is AB. The third pair of sides AB and PQ must also be equal which implies third pair of corresponding sides has to be equal. So we can say that AB will be equal to PQ and this proves the fact that if the angle subtended at the center by two chords of a circle are equal, then the two chords will be themselves equal. Let us now move on to our next theorem.